It is Medical Monday and joining us now by FaceTime is Dr. Maya Artandi with Stanford Healthcare. So good to see you. Good morning. Um, we, morning. you know, of course, we have a few questions about coronavirus. So we've heard the rate of patients who test positive on the novel coronavirus has actually gone down. However, there still are patients who test positive. So how do you follow up on those patients? These patients, if they've been tested at the Stanford testing sites in the Stanford emergency room or have been discharged from the Stanford hospital, are being followed up in the Crown Clinic. The Crown Clinic was established specifically to make sure that patients who are COVID-19 positive get medical regular follow-up. Um, the day after the patients are diagnosed, we call them and offer them that they're followed up in the Crown Clinic. If they're interested, then we risk stratify them. For example, a patient who is older, has diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol and heart disease, has a much higher risk of having a serious course of COVID-19 than a young patient without any medical problems. And so the older patient falls in the higher risk category and we follow them up every day with either telephone calls or video visits. If we feel that the patient is not doing well, we have them come into clinic so we can examine them, do an EKG, a chest X-ray, and do some treatment. We are also- What am- Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 sorry about that. Um, what about patients who have not been diagnosed with COVID-19, but they may have a cough, fever, or shortness of breath? So these patients are called PUIs, patient or persons under investigation. And we are happy to see those patients in our Crown Clinic too, if they need a same day evaluation. What happens is that a provider usually sees those patients on a video visit and is worried about them. And so then they refer them to our clinic for a same day evaluation. We see the patient in person, again, test them for COVID-19, do all the necessary steps. The beauty of that is that the PUIs are kept out of the other primary care clinics, meaning that primary care clinics are safe for patients to come back to. They will not be exposed to someone with COVID-19 symptoms. Yeah, everything is kept separate. So what specific treatment for COVID-19 can you offer in the outpatient setting? Right now, there are no FDA approved specific medications for COVID-19. It's really important though to have some specific treatments to speed up recovery, avoid spread of the virus, keep patients out of the hospital. And there are many trials going on. One very promising agent is called interferon lamina. Interferon lamina is an antiviral that can actually boost someone's immune system. It works in the lungs and in the GI tract, and those are the main targets for the novel coronavirus. Interferon lamina is usually very well tolerated, has very few side effects. Stanford right now is doing a trial to see if interferon lamina can work in the outpatient setting, can prevent hospital admission, speed up recovery, and um, spread infection to um, loved ones or close contacts. Now, Stanford is enrolling in this trial. Patients need to have been diagnosed or have had the test within three days of starting treatment. And then the patients are, or the participants are divided into two groups. One group is getting the interferon lamina injection. The other group is getting a placebo or salt water injection. The interferon lamina injection hurts less than a flu shot and works for several days. During the trial, patients are followed up very closely to see if they have any symptoms, to see if the virus is spreading. If this works, then many patients are really, um, this treatment could ease the misery for many patients and could spread, oh, we could decrease the spread of the virus. Well, we hear there still might be a concern for shortages of PPE and nasal swabs, especially if we're thinking of future waves of infection. So are there any studies addressing this? There are actually many studies at Stanford addressing exactly that issue. One study is studying if saliva can help screen for the virus and detect the virus. Um, so saliva would be very useful because patients can collect saliva themselves. So you don't need a person in PPE to collect the sample. There are, there's a lot of evidence that saliva is as good as the nasopharyngeal swab, but this is not yet validated. And this is why Stanford is doing the study. Volunteers need to give two samples, one nasopharyngeal swab 
and one saliva sample, and then the researchers compare the results. Well, you kind of touched on this, but you know, many, many patients, they really want to come and see their primary care physician or their specialist. Is it safe for patients to come back to the Stanford clinics to see their primary care physicians? We are so excited to have our patients back in person in the office. Stanford has been working so hard to go above and beyond the requirements that make it safe for patients to come back. And I personally have to say, it's really safe to come back to clinic. During the last eight weeks though, we have also realized how important virtual health is and how useful it is. So in the future, we will be offering both virtual health and in-person visits. I would love to emphasize one point though. If you have chest pain, shortness of breath, acute neurological symptoms, like you can't speak or you have focal weakness, please make sure that you call 911 and go to the emergency room. I know that many people are scared of getting COVID-19, but again, the hospitals are safe, the emergency rooms are safe, and it's really important that you take care of those urgent symptoms. All right, Dr. Maya Artandi with Stanford Healthcare, thank you so much for all of that information.